Pauline. Listening. And what was that word? Focus. Focus. I'm so stupid. So, you need to solve that problem. We can do that. Let's make it happen, darling. You're listening to KMUN Astoria, 91.9 FM, KTCB Telemuk, 89.5 FM, and streaming live at coastradio.org. Hey Alexa, Coast Community Radio, support for this program comes in part from Lewis and Clark Bank, formerly Clatsop Community Bank, with branches in Seaside, Astoria, and Oregon City. Lewis and Clark Bank brings customer-focused banking to clients across the listening area and is a proud sponsor of Coast Community Radio. Oh, we got the bankers. From NPR News in Washington, D.C., this is Weekend Edition. What's next? Where you go? I'm Scott Simon. This hour, the week in politics as one Congress is set to close and another open. Also, a new law to try to reduce sticker shock in the recovery room. Later, herself. Philoda Lloyd's powerful new film on a woman who builds a new life and home breaking free of abuse. 
And Joe Clark, a legendary educator remembered by two of the former students whose lives he uplifted. I was hustling in the streets. Clark did not have it. And he said, your time here is up. But I want you to know, you can always talk with me if you need. Do not let the excuse that your dad is not there hold you back from your dreams. First, we have our newscast. It's Saturday, January 2nd, and yes, 2021. Yeah, a brand new year. Live from NPR News, I'm Barbara Klein. The latest effort by allies of President Trump to overturn the presidential election has failed. NPR's Amy Held reports a federal judge has dismissed a lawsuit led by a House Republican. The U.S. District Judge in Texas, a Trump appointee, ruled that Congressman Louis Gohmert lacks standing to sue Vice President Pence. Gohmert, alongside Arizona Republicans, went after Pence in his capacity as president of the Senate. Pence is set to announce President-elect Joe Biden as the winner Wednesday when Congress convenes, the last step of the electoral college process before Biden takes the oath of office. Gohmert's argument went that Pence should not act as a glorified envelope opener. Rather, he should be able to choose which electors to certify. But even Trump's own Justice Department had asked the judge to throw out the case. The latest loss among dozens for Trump who keeps falsely claiming widespread electoral fraud. Amy Held, NPR News. Damage assessors in Nashville say the Christmas morning suicide bombing has had a direct impact on at least 400 residents and more than 45 businesses. And as Tony Gonzalez of member station WPLN reports, yeah, inspectors say be. two historic buildings are at risk of total collapse. Building inspectors on. had to wait five days for the FBI to grant them access to the blast zone. Now they've found seven buildings are not safe to enter. They may end up being demolished. In all, 46 properties were damaged when a local man blew up his RV just before sunrise on Christmas well, Day. Some of the brick buildings date to the 1890s. They anchored one of the city's best preserved blocks in the heart of the downtown mm -hmm. tourism district. Survivors have been returning with fire department escorts oh, to recover belongings. Wow. But that's not been possible for those in the hardest hit places, you know with entire doing, facades huh? crumbled to the sidewalk. For NPR Alexa. News, I'm Tony Gonzalez in Nashville. Ireland faces the fastest growing resurgence of coronavirus cases in the European Union, just two weeks after it had the EU's lowest infection rate. As Show McPolin reports okay, from Dublin, Alexa. residents now face new lockdown restrictions after a busy holiday season. The week before Christmas, Dublin.